G'day all, it's King Brown here again. Uh, one of the questions I get asked again is uh, about Furphy Camp Ovens. Uh, I saw it come up again just recently actually and the question was why are these Furphy Ovens so bloody expensive? Surely they're not worth that much money. Well, actually they are worth a lot of money and that's a fact. Uh, some people can't seem to accept that and uh, I love reading the comments and um, the one that particularly likes is uh, they cook the same. They all cook the same. That's clearly, that's a statement by somebody that's never cooked with a Furby, so they don't know. Uh, I cook with the uh, the camping store style uh, camp ovens that you can buy from a, uh, a normal camping shop, uh, made in Asia. I cook with them all the time. And I cook with Furbies. I cook with other brands too. So, uh, and I'm not the only bloke that does that. I know a few other people that do the same. They have a variety of ovens. Uh, those people might have an idea of what the difference is between cooking with a furphy and cooking with something from made in Asia. Uh, but if you, if you don't own one, you won't have any idea. So stop commenting. <laughs> anyway, uh, well, let's have a look at the furphy camp oven, okay? What is so special about it? I mean, I've got a 15 inch up here. I've actually got two of these 15 inches uh, camp ovens, and I've got three 20 inch camp ovens too, which I'll just uh, take a photograph of for you and put up. Uh, three beautiful big 20 inch furfies, and uh, I do a lot of cooking in those ovens. Okay, now let's have a look at the oven itself. Now this lid here, I don't know if it's gonna show up. Uh, I'll get some close ups, I guess. Uh, but that part of the lid there is very flat. That's not very professional, is it? Um, the rest of the lid, ignore the rust, it's been through the flood, I haven't had a chance to clean it up. Uh, the lid's not too bad, it's just a bit misshapen. So, uh, the stamp's on there nice and clear. It's actually not too bad a lid. I've certainly seen worse in the Furphy um, department. Um, the base, I'm a bit embarrassed to show you the inside of this base. It's, that, it's getting some surface rust in there. That's only from the floodwaters and I'm in the process of cleaning them up. But the base is very heavy. Uh, the lid is quite heavy too. <coughs> Compared to say a Metas, an older Metas oven or a Chinese oven in the size, it's, it's a chunky lid. Serious weight. The base is the same. I haven't weighed it, but yeah, that's you know, 10 kilos or more, I guess. I, I'm only guessing. Uh, the floor is not even. There's a bit of a thumb mark in the floor, just a divot and randomly. Uh, I know this one, I had this one cleaned up from scratch uh, years ago, and it has a couple of different colored bits of metal throughout the casting because I stripped it back to bare metal so I can see it. Uh, the ears. They're a bit bizarre compared to a lot of antique camp ovens that actually have that, the normal um, ear shape with the two pieces of metal. This is actually just one chunk of metal. Right, it's been welded on there with a hole drilled in it. So <laughs> There's not a lot of craftsmanship going into that, uh, but it's on there good and solid and uh, a bit hard and narrow, that little hole there. It's not really ideal for swinging one of my camp oven hooks through, but it wouldn't be much good for that. Uh, but the good thing is the, the Furfies often came out with a bale. They're one of the very few brands of ovens that actually came out with a bale. So um, this, this all that's for, that hole, is just, it's for a bale. It's not really meant to be uh, used with the hooks. Um, uh, upside down, let's have a look at the base. It's got the world's smallest legs. I mean, why would you even bother, really? Um, they're pretty much useless. You know, legs have a purpose on an oven. These ones aren't long enough to, to do anything. Really? And, uh, well, that's what they do. That's a furvy leg, a tiny little round peg on the floor of the oven. And uh, that's about it. Overall, the con you look around the wall, it's nothing flash, it's fairly even. I've certainly seen prettier camp ovens, that's for sure. Uh, in the world of collectible camp ovens, I can tell you they're not the roughest, they're not the ugliest, but they're up there with them, <laughs> that's for sure. Uh, so, you wouldn't pay a lot of money for it just based on that, would you? That's what I've been saying. So, that's obviously, the value doesn't come from appearances or perfection in craftsmanship. You know, it doesn't come in that at all. No, where's that value coming from then? What's it like to cook with? Well, I brushed on that a minute ago, but I tell you what, until you cook with a furphy, you really haven't experienced cooking in a camp oven. They are actually an absolute wonder to cook with. And I mean that. Furfies, Hardings, any of those heavy 
cast ovens. This one's very, very heavy. Anything that's very thick walled and very heavy uh, and has lots of room in it, like this one, which is 15 inch, absolutely beautiful to cook with. Way superior to anything from Asia, I'm telling you now. If you don't believe me, go find somebody who's got one and borrow it off him and try it out yourself. Uh, why is it better to cook with? The food, yes, look, oh, it's often said, oh, the food comes out just the same. Well, if you're a good cook, you can cook good food in any camp oven. I can do that. I do that all the time. I use Chinese ovens in my catering business, pumping out beautiful bread rolls and desserts and whatever I want to do. Uh, and I know what I'm, but I know what I'm doing with it. When I'm doing it with a furphy, or when I'm doing it with one of my other vintage ovens, I'm just doing it a lot easier, a lot easier. Now it's all about how they store the heat. Those little Chinese thin walled things, they're pretty responsive to heat. You put some heat on, bang, it's hot inside that oven. You put too much on it, bang, it's too late, you've already burnt your food. These things take a bit of winding up. You throw a shovel of coals on here, it's gonna be a few more minutes before it gets through into the oven. It just slows the process down. They come up the temperature slower, they go off the temperature slower, and they are easier to, more easy to control because once you've got some heat on there, even if the coals are going out, that oven, it'll just keep humming along at that same temperature. Uh, much easier to control the heat. So it really, they really are a pleasure to cook with, especially the big ones, the 20-inch ovens. Oh, my Lord, I tell you what, they are fantastic things to cook with. They really, really are a pleasure to work with. Uh, I do nearly all my meat cooking at the rodeos in those 20-inch ovens because they're just... You set them and forget them. It's as easy as that. Give me a Chinese oven. Ah, better take some of those coals off. It's a bit hot. Oh, now it's running out. It's getting cold. Better put a few more on. That's happening all the time. Monitoring. Fixing it up. Burning. Black bits on the food. Can't have it. It's got to be perfect. All right? It's got to be perfect. Best way to get perfect is have an oven that responds uh, gently over time. Time is your friend when you're camp oven cooking. You don't want things to happen fast. You want to have some time. Okay? Furfies. Absolutely fantastic to cook with, all right? So that's a plus, you know? Does that make them worth a lot of money? Well, not many people know how good they are to cook with, so probably not. What actually makes them cook with is, is it the age, because, you know, maybe they're an antique vintage oven, like a Metas or an Albion, or they stopped making Albions in 1907, so yes, of course, they're gonna have some value, aren't they? They're very old. Uh, but these things, I mean, this one's got the year it was made right here on the lid. It was made in 1993. So, it's got a bit of age on it, but it's not that old, is it? It was only made back in the 90s. They only made them for probably 1980 to about, I don't know, the late 90s, 99, something like that. They didn't make them for a huge amount of time. Um, and they didn't make them very long ago. Uh, they had a couple of, they had another foundry, Billman's, they actually had a go at making Furbies for a while, and, and they did a pretty good job too. And you can always uh, usually tell a Billman's made furphy. There's a few little things that they have uh, that are different to an original. And of course, right at the end, they decided to get, because they the, the, the furphy company had actually switched to casting in aluminium and not cast iron anymore. So what they did was they uh, offshored the camp oven market to a foundry in China. So there's quite a few Chinese. I've actually got one over there on the shelf. I'll show it to you in this video. Um, there's actually quite a few Chinese ovens that have Furphy written on them, Shepherd and written on them, but they're made in China. And uh, so, yeah, it's good to know what you're looking at when you, if you want to buy something. Of course, they're not worth anywhere near an original oven. Um, so it's not the age that makes them valuable. What is it? Well, it's all about the collecting value, really. I mean, uh, Furphy collectors, the people who, we, they, these Furphy camp ovens, they sort of attract two different types of collectors. Okay, you get your standard camp oven collector like myself and all the other blokes out there that are, and ladies that are collecting their camp ovens and uh, you know, trying to build a bit of a collection going. Um, they'll pay good money to have a full set of Furbies and you know, they'll buy one here and one there as they find them. Uh, and then you've got um, the Furphy collectors. Okay, that's a whole different breed again. A Furphy collector He'll collect anything that's got Furphy written on it, you know? And there's a lot of them out there. I'm telling you now, there's a lot of Furphy collectors. Furphy made a lot of different stuff. So it's a good hobby, and yeah, they made all sorts of things, from little things, bottle openers, 
pig troughs, you name it, gates. There's been combustion stoves, camp ovens. I mean, they made a vast array of things, and they've been making them for quite a long time. They made a lot of things for a lot longer than they made camp ovens. They hardly made them for a very small fraction of time, 20 years. That's all they made them for. Um, so the Furphy collectors, they're going to clash with the camp oven collectors because it's got Furphy written on it, so they want one too. Okay, so that pushes the price up, and that's always held the Furphy price up a little bit. Okay, uh, still doesn't explain the extraordinary money that you see Furphy ovens being fetched for these days. I mean, uh, those three 20 inch camp ovens over there, the three 20 inch Furphy camp ovens, I've actually seen them sell for $2,000 each. So, and this one here, I actually sold two of these myself last year for uh, how much was it? $1,100. Yeah. Each, that is, each, $1,100 each for a 15 inch um, Furphy camp oven. And my advice to you, if you can see one, if you find one that's worth, le that's for sale for less than $1,100, buy it. Because they're not going down in price. They won't ever go down in price. They'll always go up. Uh, yeah, so anyway, uh, scarcity, there's only so many of them now in the country. You know, they made them for a certain amount of time. A lot of them got broken, lost, disregarded. Um, a lot of them are locked up in collections. Um, you know, so scarcity is increasing. You know, they're not making more of them, there's getting less of them. So it's always going to go up in value and get harder to find. So that's one way. But it still doesn't explain the big prices, the real big prices they'll pay for Furphy. That pretty much come down to a combination of factors in the last couple of years. There was a mining boom and there was a fair bit of wealth around. And uh, some of them boys, they, they got it into their heads to start collecting camp ovens and you couldn't beat them at an auction, believe me. They would just keep throwing money at it till they owned it. And I know a few collectors like that too, that, that they'll do the same thing. They, they got the cash and they don't care what they pay. If they need it, they'll buy it. That's as simple as that. <coughs> um, and that, and also the, uh, the COVID lockdowns, believe it or not, it really, really put a bit of a price uh, run on the... Um, on the price of the camp ovens in general, especially on the furfies, because the new people coming into the industry, into the into the game, they the only name they really recognise, they've never heard of Albion, they've never heard of Metas, they've never heard of Karen, they've never heard of Etna, they've never heard of any of these RM Williams ovens, the, the Simpson ovens, they've never heard of these other highly collectible camp ovens. But that name Furphy, they've heard of that, they know that, so that must be the best one. We'll get that, that's Australian made. And we all got to have Australian made now, don't we, since that virus, we've definitely got to have Australian made. So the price of Furby's was driven, in particular, all camp ovens, but the price of Furby's in particular was driven sky high thanks to that virus. And is it going to come down again? No, it's not coming down. If you think it's coming down, you're dreaming. Uh, do you think I'm going to sell my three 20 inch ovens over here for anything under $2,000? Mate. You're dreaming if you think I will. No way in the world. Those things will be worth ten thousand dollars in another few years. Uh, that's just the way it is. It's Australian made. It's an icon. Uh, it's scarcity. It has value. Um, and if you don't believe me, just look up eBay, check out the completed listings, and you'll see what the money they've been fetching for these ovens for the last five, ten years, whatever you want to look at. They've been going up. They don't go down, they just go up. They might level out, they might dip a little bit, and then, but they'll go back up again, straight away. So if you find a cheap one, grab it, cook with it. You'll thank me later, because they are really, really good to cook with.